Hello and welcome to the Despreneur podcast. My name is Thomas Lornavichis, I'm the founder of Despreneur and I'll be your host. In this show, I'll connect and talk with top designers, successful entrepreneurs and tech visionaries. The goal of this podcast is to unlock your potential and help you build a successful business and live with a purpose. Hello and welcome to the Despreneur podcast with me, Thomas Lornavichis, your host, and today we're having Mike Maloney, a photographer and founder and founder of FilterGrade, providing you high-quality Photoshop actions, Lyrum presets, and other photo editing resources for photographers, designers, and bloggers. What's up, Mike? Hey, what's up, Thomas? How are you? I'm I'm not too bad. Nice nice to have you this on the, on this podcast today, and I'm I'm so excited to talk about FilterGrade today. Oh, thank you so much. I'm excited. I love I love Despreneur. It's a great site. Oh, thank you, man. So, so I, I already gave uh, a short, like, brief introduction of, of you, Mike, but uh, is there anything you want to tell for, for our listeners? Uh, is there any other label you use? Do you call yourself blogger, entrepreneur, Instagrammer, or one of these, <laughs> like, cool kids are around there? It's mainly just uh, the founder of Filter, and then on top of that, I'm also getting into photography more now and doing a little bit of fashion and editorial work, so that's about it. All right, so I'm I'm very curious. Uh, how did you get started with Filtergrade? Because I kind of know the story. We 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 chatted briefly about it, but can you tell more about like how the idea came to your head and what were the first steps? Yeah, sure. So what happened was I was making some Photoshop actions and selling them on a marketplace called Envato, uh, specifically Graphic River. They have a few different marketplaces where they sell like design assets, website themes, all that kind of stuff. And so I decided to sell some stuff there and just see if, one, it would sell, and two, if I could, you know, get a brand and reputation there just to learn how that works. And um, after a few months, I was doing okay on there, and I met um, one of my friends, Adam, and he sort of pushed me and gave me some advice on how to, like, make my own website out of it. And so then really after a little bit of, you know, pressure from him, uh, good pressure, obviously, uh, I started FilterGrade and it sort of just grew from there. Um, I sold on Creative Market to start to sort of test my product and see if there was a you know viability to it and if people actually would want to buy it. Um, after about six months of selling, a lot of people seemed to like it and it was doing pretty well. So I was like, okay, uh, let's keep moving with this. And then I launched the full website store. And so we started selling on our own website and uh, now we're sort of doing a lot of tutorials and educational content and sort of just grown from there. And soon we're hoping to launch uh, a mobile app. So that'll be really cool. Oh, wow. That sounds exciting, man. And uh, so you were talking about the, the validation, which is which is super important in, in these days. And did, did it come to you naturally to just validate the, the idea and then launch it on your website? Or, or someone like suggested you or you just like tried experimenting with one thing and another one and then it just came to your head? Uh, it was sort of a mix actually. So um, I wanted to sell on a marketplace again because I had already done that in the past and that's what I sort of knew best. So I thought it'd be easiest to start there. But um, I'd also been reading a bunch of startup blogs and stuff in that time because that was sort of my interest. And so they all mentioned also you have to test viability and make sure that there's actually demand you sort of have to grow an audience before you can launch, you know, a full product and stuff. And so I decided to look into that. um, And I just went from there. And, you know, it actually turned out to be the best to test it that way, because I got some interesting feedback that I didn't really expect. And it helped me shape better products on my website, which have helped the business grow faster and helped me sort of market the products better too. Yeah, that's that's cool. I think that's the way to go. Even though it, most of the time it's it's so boring, you know, doing all the research and trying to validate the idea, but uh, it totally paid off, as I see. Uh, you were talking about the the app for for Filter Grade, and uh, you're talking about like native app, right, for like iPhone or Android. Yes, exactly. Yeah, hoping to do that soon. All right, that's that's awesome, man. And my question is, so Filter Grade started just like selling these uh, Photoshop actions and Lightroom presets and, and you still like call it filter grade and you look into, into the app. Uh, what's next? Like, uh, what, what do you plan to, to do with filter grade? Is it going to just uh, sell these resources uh, or are you looking more into like education field, as you mentioned, tutorials and like guides? 
Uh, sort of a mix, but the main focus for now will definitely be growing the site in terms of products and just having a wider spread amount of products in every type of photography, um, whether that's street photography or wedding photography or any of those different fields. Uh, I want to make sure that we have products for everyone because right now we still we have a good amount of products, but it's still limited in you know what we cover. Uh, on top of that, we're launching something new very soon that's basically going to be a monthly subscription to Filter Grade called Filter Select. And what this will be is a monthly, you know, email list where we give you exclusive filters, tutorials, and, you know, partnerships uh, content from special photographers, artists, designers, et cetera. And so that's going to be one of my biggest focuses in the next six months to a year, because I think a lot of people enjoy our filters, but they wanted a little bit more from us. And they really like the educational content. So I wanted to make a product that sort of encompasses both of these things, but also has some exclusivity to it with, you know, specifically big name photographers who are going to have a better approach to their work. And they can share that with these people, you know, our customers to help them learn how to better improve, you know, their photography and stuff. That's the way to go. And I really like that you have this, you know, set plan for like six months a year and you're determined for, for it. So it sounds really cool. Um, so you're definitely like uh, very interested in photography and uh, would you be able to reveal your your photo editing process? How does it look like? Oh yeah, sure, I definitely could. Um, so right now my basic process, um, I start with camera raw and shoot all my photos in raw now um, just because it helps to adjust the light. So if you have the ability on a DSLR or even any camera to do that, I would definitely recommend it. Um, so once I open up my photo in camera raw, I adjust the light, make sure everything looks, you know, just natural. I try to go for as natural light as possible and try to capture like the perfect exposure. That's always my goal. Um, and then I'll also bump up the vibrance a little bit because that helps to bring out the colors. Uh, then I'll open it in Photoshop. And once I get in Photoshop, I mainly play with three or four adjustment layers, depending on what type of photography it is. Um, the first one is always curves. I always use the curves adjustment layer to bump the brightness up a little bit and also increase the contrast in the photo. And that really helps bring out colors and sort of sharpen the whole photo. Um, on top of that, I'll use a photo filter layer at a very low um, opacity, uh, specifically the sepia filter. I usually use that at about 45%. And then I'll lower the entire layer opacity to like 10 or 20% depending on how bright or dark the photo is. And then after that, the only other thing I'll usually do is play with the selective color adjustment layer and just make sure the shadows and the hues look right. I usually darken them up a little bit and make them sort of a slight cyan tint. Um, and then other than that, I'll also add a vibrance layer, boost the vibrance to about 10% and then lower the saturation to like negative two just to balance everything out. And that's basically my process for editing a photo. There you go. So now we can just totally rip your style off and then start producing our own photos. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, that's cool, man. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate it. No problem. How do you think important photography is in today's business and, and why these huge companies like Facebook, Uber, Airbnb, they have so many beautiful pictures on their websites? I think for a number of reasons, mainly like the prevalence of photography now. Everyone has a smartphone or a camera or something they can use to take pictures and everyone wants to document what they're up to. And photography is just the medium to do that. And as, you know, mobile phones have grown and mobile internet has grown, photography has sort of sparked, you know, it's just one form of communication people use outside of text and video and sound. So in my opinion, photography has just grown because of that. And I think it's important that companies use proper humanizing photos because they have to reflect their brand in the right, you know, frame of mind. And they want to, you know, have proper imagery that reflects what they want, you know, to, you know, show to the world. And I think that really helps a lot. Um, and I also think just in general now people demand, I don't know if they demand higher quality photos, but since there are such better photos in general, like on the web and sites like Unsplash and Barn Images and a few other ones that give free stock photos are available now with really high quality photos, 
people sort of expect a higher quality now, I think. And so if you don't have good images on your website or any asset of your brand doesn't have your facet of your brand doesn't have those that imagery, then people are going to definitely notice it now. And so that's why I think a lot of companies are moving in the direction of hiring photographers and making sure their photos, you know, align with their brand properly. Yeah, I definitely agree. And especially like when the first time, like when it discovered uh, all these like talented uh, photographers on Instagram, I was like, oh my God, my photos suck so bad. And I wanted to read it and I really wanted to. I know it's hard to compare yourself to those people because they're so talented. There's so many talented people these days, just everywhere, all over the, you know, Instagram. Yeah. So I was so inspired to like find out how did they like edit their photos and then slowly I, I developed my own you know like editing process but it's like far far away from from the guys that i follow so so yeah i, I totally agree that that the standards are definitely higher or maybe they were higher before but people are just like sharing it so easily today and it's so easy to, to discover these good uh, talented people so i think that's that's why photography is, is such a huge trend these days Yep, definitely, definitely agree with that. So what are like the most powerful ways to use images for, for your business growth? Because uh, you're, you're providing these uh, uh, Photoshop actions and, and, and Lightroom presets that help you to really like enhance these photos. Uh, but where do you use them? Like uh, personally, or, like other business cases, how do, do businesses use images to really like engage their audience and, and sell more? I think there's a number of ways that people use filter grade with their images. Are you asking specifically filter grade, like how they edit them? Or are you talking about just in general, how people use images? Well, it can be with filter grade. If you have any cases, that would be awesome. Okay. Uh, I'll answer like a little bit of both. But so in general, I think businesses are just trying to have higher quality images, like, like we talked about before, and they want everything to sort of have a similar style. So that's where a lot of editing comes in. So certain companies you'll notice will use generic or not generic looks, but they'll have a certain look to their photos. And I think that's a big part of Instagram and, you know, your feed these days is people like when you have a style to your photography um, in terms of how filter grade comes into play, I think it can help brands that might not necessarily have the time or expertise to develop their own filters. They can sort of grab some of our filters and start there and then customize them to their liking, because I think then they still have, you know, a solution that's their own, it's unique to their brand and it's their style, but they have, <clears throat> excuse me, they have a starting point where they can get, you know, some assistance, we have tutorials and we have things that sort of help you understand how you edit your photos better so you can get a better understanding of like how to edit an entire brand's photos as opposed to just a few here and there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think automation is, is the future of the business and in, in, in a field and especially like automating all these digital tasks, it's, it's the way to go. And the next question actually leads from, from that like automation thing. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you grew your business from like creative market into your website and now you have like the, the full, uh, full platform to, to sell these filters. Do you have any like team members and, and how do you manage your team? How do you like deal with your day to day basis uh, tasks? Yeah, I have a few team members. Um, no one is full time yet. Unfortunately, I just haven't really had the need to hire someone full time. And I kind of want to soon, but we need to grow a little more before that happens. But I have a few writers that I've hired. Um, I mainly manage that with Facebook Messenger or Skype. We just talk there. Um, I pay them through PayPal. That's generally how I handle just like payments and that kind of stuff. Um, and we just basically I have a few different writers that will write articles for the website and then uh, I'll just keep them sort of queued up. And then over time, I'll slowly post them in a good schedule that fits with, you know, what we're doing. Um, so that's one way I've sort of automated the business so that I have more time to work on products as opposed to writing, which has helped a lot. Um, I also used to have some employees who did the social media, but they've actually had to move on to other gigs. So I've taken over that again, but I also, I use scheduling tools to help save time. Like Facebook has a scheduling tool and I'll, you know, make posts ahead in Instagram to save a little bit of time. Other than that, mainly the way the business has grown the best is just by continually doing what's worked for us and then just finding ways to scale on social media. That's been a really good uh, marketing mechanism for us. I use Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, and a little bit of Google Plus to promote our articles and 
products and things like that. And it, it didn't always, you know, seem to be a very strong platform to market on at first when we were smaller and I didn't know if it was like a good way to go, but over time, uh, like social media in general has proved itself worthy for the business. And so I've just continued to invest in that and learn how to use that. And then that's about it for, you know, marketing wise. Yeah, I like that you mentioned scheduling tools, uh, just like a couple of for Facebook, but uh, could you go more into details and, uh, and tell me more like, for example, what do you use for Instagram? When, what, what kind of like scheduling tool there is and uh, what are the best times to, to, to post? Because uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure many people uh, who are listening uh, to this podcast, they will be curious. Okay, so, so what kind of tool do you use and like what are the best times to, to really post? And I'm, I'm sure it's different for different people, but maybe you can just uh, share some of your uh, knowledge. Yeah, sure. So I usually edit my photos and then I will just send them to myself in Facebook Messenger. It's kind of crazy, but couldn't figure out how to get the, the sync thing working with my phone. So I just message them to myself. Um, I don't really know of any scheduling tool for Instagram yet, and they don't have any web stuff, which is kind of annoying because it makes it a little bit harder on me to manage my um, my accounts. But luckily, they got the dual account feature in Instagram now, so you can sign into a bunch of accounts. So that's been pretty helpful. Um, so basically, all I do is I'll save a bunch of photos into my phone. I'll message them and then save them to my, uh, my own phone into different albums. And then over time, I'll just post them as, you know, along with our calendar of like what we're posting and I'll try to keep the feed consistent in terms of timing. I think you can post just about every day for your brand. Uh, I post once to once or twice a day. And I'd say the times that work best for me are generally five to nine at night, usually around eight o'clock. Like if you're really trying to get maximum exposure for a photo or something important, post it at eight o'clock during the week. It should get a lot of exposure except for Friday and Saturday because people are you know, generally going out and stuff at that time. But usually 8, 8 p.m. is good. And sometimes in the morning, like 9 or 10 a.m. when people are waking up, they'll see the photo. Other than that, I'd say like just a general tip would be try to post the highest quality photos you can on your Instagram and try to have some sort of a, a theme or something that goes with like your feed just to make it personal to you because that'll help people sort of like empathize with it and they'll want to follow it if you have some uniqueness to it. And then other than that, I would say just try to engage with your community, go to meetups, shoot with other people. Um, I've been doing that a lot in Boston. There's this really cool thing called Boston Portrait Meet that I went to and it helped me meet a lot of other photographers and designers and models and stuff, people to work with just to help me grow my Instagram and sort of get engaged with the community. So if you're looking for a way to sort of get started, that was one thing that really helped me get my account going and like get involved with the community because I was sort of just on the outside taking pictures on my own and then that helped me get really into it. That's very interesting. Thank you for sharing. And uh, you talked about like marketing and then you mentioned Pinterest and now you just mentioned the, the part of meeting and uh, could you tell me more like how people find you and like your products? What's the like the, the roadmap? Yeah, sure. Um, the biggest platforms. So one is social media. Uh, just by posting, you know, photos that people edit with filter grade, that's just one way we've continuously marketed the brand. Content marketing is one of my biggest investments because about 50 to 70% of our traffic, I think 50 to 60% comes from organic search. And so that's been the biggest driver of, you know, everything. And so I mainly focus on posting one to two blog posts a week and then doing really good distribution of those through all of our social media and like any of my connections. And that even comes down to like working with you and how I've guest posted on Despreneur. So that's one other thing I've done, a lot of guest posting and sort of trying to get more attention to Filtergrade as a brand in like the blogosphere as a whole, I guess you could say, as opposed to just on, you know, our site and our social media, because that's one of the better ways to get more attention to your brand. And then other than that, a little, haven't done a ton of press work just because I haven't had time to focus on that. And then email marketing is one way that I've done to sort of engage our audience that we already like. So once they come on our website, capture their email, and then that's how I stay in touch and provide, you know, exclusive discounts and information from us. That's lovely, man. And uh, thank you for contributing to Despreneur. I think it really helped people to understand more about photography and filters. And they hopefully, hopefully some of them uh, discovered filter grade. 
through this, Bernard. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, man. So, so I, I would like to touch one of the the most interesting topics for me. I I know that you dropped out of college to pursue photo grade full time. How does it feel to be a rebel? <laughs> oh, it feels wonderful. Um, aside from all the you know condescending remarks and looks, etc. But honestly, like it's pretty cool. Um, but the main reason was just you know college wasn't a great fit for me and I felt more confident working on this project because it was something that I had invested a lot of time and energy into and I really believe in filter grade and I think what what I'm working on is important you know and I and I know there's you know a lot of people who it helps their business run more smoothly and so I'm really proud of that and it came to the point where it was hard for me to pick it was hard for me to focus on both at the same time you know school and filter grade I would find myself, you know, working on my homework, but I would just always get distracted and start working on filter grade and would never really get my work done. And I figured, you know, why should you pay for school and sort of like, you know, at that point, it's a choice, you know, you pay for college. And so it just didn't seem like the right choice for me at this time. So I decided to take a break from it and work on filter grade. And I'm going to see how that goes for a while. And so far, it's going great. <laughs> Yeah, I obviously totally agree with you, man. And I think it's like the best investment you can do is yourself. And of course, like you can pay for for overpriced education that you may not even like it at the end, or you can invest your time, effort and money into into something you really like. So I'm really glad you found it very early because many people probably they're just like scared of, of really admitting that they don't like education and they want to do something. But uh but it's fine. So it's very important to really like find support and like surround yourself with uh, with people who believe in you. And like there are many people who, who want to, to really invest in their own ideas, but they just like take the, the safe path, you know, the education that they're not even sure if it's going to pay off. So how do you really like find these supporters around you and, and, and really like shape the right mindset to succeed? Yeah, I definitely agree. It's It's really important to have a good support network because that'll help you, you know, get through some of the tougher times with your business. Um, for me, there's been a few different inspirations and mentors and, you know, helpful people throughout my journey as an entrepreneur, I guess you could say. Um, the first one that sort of, I don't know personally, but I've read a lot of his work and his articles inspired me was Ryan Holiday. Uh, he has a blog and he has some really good articles, one of which is called um, advice for a young man hoping to go somewhere, something along the lines of that. And it's a really good piece on, you know, sort of working hard and it keeps your head straight because it, it tells you very, you know, directly how it is in the world and how, you know, the importance of hard work, dedication to your craft. It's not really about, you know, doing crazy stuff to get ahead. It's just, you have to just be willing to commit to something. And he gives a lot of good advice on his site and there's this really cool, post on genius.com that sort of annotated the blog post and he also shared some behind the scenes and I really love reading that kind of stuff. So that's been one um, helpful inspiration to me, I guess. Um, my family's been really supportive of me. My parents and my brother have helped me a lot with filter grid all the way from, you know, before it was even a real business when it was just an idea and I was just, you know, playing around in Photoshop. I would show them the filters and they would always be, you know, willing to give me feedback um, whether it was critical or just, you know, being nice and saying, you know, those filters are great and just always being a support network for me. Um, on top of that, I've had a ton of great mentors online that I've met through the marketplaces and, you know, blogging um, and all these different people. I, I can't name all the names. Unfortunately, it would just be like too many people. But I would just say in general, I've just had just I would say a bunch of people on the Internet from different, you know, experiences have helped me um, graphic designers and marketers and other business owners my friend adam i can mention his name because he's helped me so much um you've helped me a ton because i remember we started off very early working together on despreneur articles and stuff and people like that have helped me you know from the early days and that helped sort of lay like give me a good foundation of how to do business and how to grow my own business and i'm forever you know grateful of that and then other than that the support network I'd have now aside from that I would just say like you know have some good friends who are willing to give you real honest feedback who aren't afraid to tell you you know your flaws a lot of people nowadays are afraid 
to you know be mean to their friend or they're afraid to say like honest things because they think it might hurt them but in my opinion i think i prefer to have friends around me who are willing to give me that raw honest feedback because at the end of the day if it's going to help me improve you know myself or my business or you know my projects then i'm going to i'd rather know that and have honest friends than people who are just going to be sort of overly encouraging or just yes yes men and women so that, that's really my network i guess you could say yeah like that you mentioned that uh you need like raw feedback and and sometimes you really need someone to tell you man like you're you're doing this wrong or like you're you're just chasing money or you became an asshole or, or something to really like wake you up and and tell you that uh come on look at it and then do you really want to to really pursue this lifestyle or like do you want to to do business in this way and so on so i think it's 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 very important to to have uh brutal f honest honest feedback from time to time so I, i'm glad you mentioned that one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you're not even in your 20s right how old are you uh, i'm 19 not 20 yet <laughs> so there, th there you go so how do you keep focus and then like stay away from distractions and you're just 19 which is like i still try to processes what I was doing at 19 but <laughs> I was definitely not doing what you are doing today so so how do you man like keep managing everything um it's been kind of interesting I guess you could say so in high school I started the company uh when I was a junior in high school and then the real challenge was just you know finding the time to do it um so I would just do it after school and after sports I would just come home you know work on the company as much as I can um generally like my rules for staying focused are they come to like i've come to three conclusions over time the first biggest thing that i noticed is like my phone was my biggest distraction most of the time when it came to getting work done and avoiding you know um outside you know noise and stuff so sometimes i'll just turn my phone on airplane mode if i need to get stuff done and i'm just like overwhelmed because generally you know most of the things that are bothering me on my phone the notifications they can wait whereas some projects can't so that's like the first rule um the other thing is i always try to work in a place that's quiet um, or very like focused on work whether that's a cafe or a library or a co-working space or just you know my home office because then you can be more comfortable like working there and you're not distracted by whatever's going on around you and I think it's good to work in various locations. You know, uh, remote work is really cool, and I definitely respect that. But you just need to make sure that you have a focused place to work because if not, it might be hard to work and you might be less likely to work. For example, if you're like, I've never come into this problem, but some people I know have, you know, decided to work on the beach, and sometimes the beach would be too appealing, and then they just decide not to do as much work. So I think it's just you have to be really self-disciplined and make sure you set aside a certain amount of time every day and that sort of comes into my third rule is make sure you have time set aside to invest in yourself every day whether it's you know working on your projects for four hours or five hours or perfecting a hobby like photography or design or painting or whatever hobby you have um, just make sure you you set aside a certain amount of time every day for that because you know you deserve and you you really should invest in yourself that's the most important thing and i think focus comes into play a lot for that because you need to be focused with your time and you need to be disciplined with everything in order to invest that into yourself every day. I wish I heard this when I was 19 and I, I totally like agree with you, man. And, and I would like to ask you about your, your like habits or routines. And you mentioned these three main things. You, uh, you just pay respect a lot to discipline and uh, personal time. And, and, and of course, like try to to get away from distractions on your phone but is there anything you do daily like any routines in the morning afternoon evening do you meditate do you listen to music or do you read what do you do uh yeah so there's a few different routines i do um sometimes it changes like depending on the environment i'm in where i'm living but lately my routine has been generally to wake up around eight in the morning um try to go to bed at like 10 or 11 because i think Sleep is one of the most important things. I never really used to know that until I did a little bit of reading about it, and then I realized that was very important. And so opposed to the typical mentality of working, you know, all night and, you know, going as hard as you can, I actually try to focus on sleep now. That's a big thing. Um, 
And so just getting to bed at a consistent time has really helped. And I noticed that I work more efficiently because of it. The second routine every day is usually after I wake up, I'll typically just like read or watch Netflix or something early in the morning, just like relaxed. I don't jump out of bed and work right away because usually I'm not fully awake and I just like to relax in the morning anyways. So I just do that. And then at like nine or nine thirty, I'll hop out of bed and then go to the bathroom and, you know, brush my teeth, put my contacts in, take a shower. Uh, sometimes I do push ups and like sit ups and stretching just to like wake myself up. And then after that, I'll usually, you know, take my shower and then start my day from there. And it'll either be on filter grade at home or sometimes I'll go to an office or sometimes I'll go into Boston and do photography work. And so generally that's like, those are the only routines I have in the morning. Other than that, you know, mainly just, you know, a very average day of just working and things like that. You know, nothing, nothing super special, I'd say. Yeah, you cannot really plan the day and especially when you're an entrepreneur, it's just like things happen and one priority changes the other one. So, so I totally agree. And, but still, it's, yeah. it's still good because you, you have the, the morning routine, which, which starts the same way. And, and I like that you mentioned sleep, the quality of sleep and then a little bit of exercise in the morning. And of course, like waking up and really like being uh, sharp focused for your work. So one of the last questions for you, Mike, is how do you see yourself in the next five years? What is your vision? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't, I don't say, I don't think I've looked, I've looked that far ahead. Um, not five years at least, but I'd say just in general, I'm going to keep working on filter grade. And I really want to build that out. And I really have high hopes for the app. I want to do something sort of new in the photo editing space for mobile photography and sort of more simplified to make it easier for people to take and edit photos and share them on their phone. Because I think photography is a very important aspect of our lives. And as it becomes more important and more efficient and you know accessible to everyone, I think it's important that the tools we use to do that are also really high quality and built for their purpose. And so I really want to build a nice app and I want to take FilterGrade to be a place where photographers see it as, you know, a really good marketplace for filters and educational hub for, you know, learning photo editing and the Adobe suite and all the programs that come with that. And on top of that, you know, obviously the app, like I mentioned, other than that, I'm just going to continue, you know, building my businesses. Um, truthfully, I'm also very interested in, you know, where things are going with the cannabis industry, especially as it becomes more legalized in the United States. Um, living in Massachusetts, it's like on the bill soon. So I've definitely been like watching that. And I think it's a cool industry. And I might see if I can become a part of that at some point in time. But other than that, I'm just going to, you know, stick with my routine, keep working. And then the only other big thing uh, I might want to mention, I guess, um, I'm going to try to be moving to California sometime in the next six months to a year as well. Because I really think that's a great place to live. And it's very, you know, a very vibrant community of photographers, designers, and creative people in general who are all working on cool projects and I'd love to live there. So that's really the other big thing in the next five years that I've, I've thought about. There you go, guys. You heard it on Despinar podcast. The next huge thing, the next big Instagram is filter grade. And, and it's really exciting, man, to hear your plans. And uh, I definitely agree. California is a cool place to be. And I definitely agree that cannabis is, is a cool industry to, to look at. And uh, I'm pretty excited to see what, what you bring to the world in the next five years. And and let's keep in touch. Oh, thank you. So the very last question. So usually I try just to come up with like ridiculous question to, to make people think. And uh, question for you is, so there is, a, there is a, this Galaxy Summit. And if you had to represent Earth in the Galaxy Summit, what top three photos you would show? Hmm. So to like represent Earth to every other, you know, space object. Is that what you're talking about? Exactly. I'm not even yeah. sure what they do in the Galaxy Summit, but you know, you, you, you've been selected and you go there and you present Earth, the whole uh, planet with top three photos. What, what would you choose? Oh, the top three. That's hard because there's only there's been like so many billions and trillions of photos taken over time. Um, what three would best represent Earth? 
I don't even know to be exact. Um, one photo that I really, really like that I think might would be Steve McCurry's portrait of a young girl in, um, I don't know which country, I forget, but I think that portrait is just out of this world, literally. And I think that would be something that would just represent, you know, earth and humans uh, very vividly and naturally. Uh, other than that, maybe something crazy like a selfie from a selfie stick. Not, I don't know about a specific photo, but I just think like, something that would really be telling of humans would be like a photo from a selfie stick. Um, and that would be very representative in the galaxy summit. And then the third photo would maybe just be, I don't know. I don't know what the third one would be. That would have to be like a mystery, maybe like just a photo of earth in general or of whatever, like the most, like a, a collage of the most beautiful monuments or earthly wonders, just something to represent like all of earth. Nice, nice. I think you, you've been struggling to, to answer this question and that was the, the main point uh, of this question. <laughs> so thank you very much, Mike, for, for your time and for, for sharing your knowledge and experience. And you're a very, very inspiring young individual. And I'm really looking forward to, to seeing the next big thing for you. And uh, thank you for sharing your, your plans with FilterGrade. And uh, I hope to really like hop on the next episode and, and talk about your, your future projects uh, anytime soon. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, man. All right, guys. So thank you very much for listening. And I'll see you or hear you probably in, in the next episode. There you have it. Thank you very much for joining me today in this episode. I hope you enjoyed and learned from it as much as I did. Thank you for today's guest. Please make sure to go to Despreneur, subscribe to the email list get updates about the upcoming episodes and inspiring stories from design, technology, and entrepreneurship fields. Subscribe to the Despreneur podcast on the iTunes and please leave an honest review. It really helps me to understand how I can improve and serve you better. It also helps other people to discover this podcast. I appreciate your time and feedback. Please let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. You can reach me on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. I love connecting with you. Thanks again. And bye until the next time.